share some of our favorite beaches that we enjoyed on the big island of Hawaii. Our first beach is at Kihalo Bay, which is 11 miles north of Kona International Airport. We like this beach because it's off the beaten path. To get to this beach, you'll take the access road near mile marker 82 on Highway 19. Then you turn on an unmarked gravel road. The parking area is about one mile in. You will want sturdy shoes for hiking as most of the hiking is along the lava rock. This trail is well marked and is part of the Ala Kahakai Historic Trail, which covers 175 miles of shoreline, hiking mostly on the west and south side of the Big Island. We were hiking to Mono Point and came across three beautiful black sand beaches. It took about a mile and a half to see all three beaches, so about three miles round trip. We went on an overcast day, but it was still warm. Water and snacks are always a great idea. We did see a few fishermen early in the morning, but we did have the hike and all three beaches to ourselves. If you like a short hike, no crowds, and black sand beaches while looking for something off the beaten path, this is a great beach choice. Our next favorite is actually two beaches that are located right next to each other. Kikaua and Kukio. Both of these beaches are located in a private community, so you'll need to get a visitor pass from the security gate when you enter. There is limited parking, so if you are visiting during peak season, get there early. We went there twice in January and had no issues arriving at 11 a.m. in the morning one day and 5 p.m. another day to watch the sunset. We like this beach for the sand, the small swimming cove, palm trees, and the wildlife. We saw a couple turtles resting on the beach and we saw our very first Hawaiian monk seal. The monk seal that you see right now is actually a frequent visitor and every time he comes they call the volunteers uh, so they rope off that area just to make sure they have enough space from anyone that might be walking through the area. A few other perks are that both of these beaches have their own restrooms, their own showers, um, water and shade. But whether you like one beach or the other, they both have great facilities. And one more thing, there are two parking lots that you can park at. You can either park at the Kukio Golf Resort, which is near mile marker 87. Otherwise, if that one is full, you can go to the Four Seasons, which is just a half a mile further down the road. If you are looking for a kid-friendly beach, a great place to watch the sunset, or just want a smaller beach with calm water located in a more secluded area, this is a great beach choice. Punalu'u Black Sand Beach is a must-see beach. It is located about 28 miles south of Volcanoes National Park. So if that's on your list, this beach is a popular stop along the way. We like this beach for the turtles. There were turtles everywhere, in the water, on the land. It's a popular beach to see turtles. Aside from that, it's a beautiful black sand beach. The beach is lined with tons of coconut palm trees, the water is blue, the palm trees are green, the sand is black, um, just a lot of contrast, very, very beautiful. It was actually very windy the day that we were visiting. Here's Paul holding on for dear life during the windstorm. It was windy, but not that windy. Some of the beach amenities include parking, restrooms, showers, pavilions and tables for picnics, and a great aloha sign. <laughs> There's also an apparel hut that you can see right here where you can buy all sorts of things. There's actually a website where you can see what kinds of um, items and apparel that they sell. This beach is probably more of a sunrise beach uh, rather than a sunset, which is opposite of the water behind the palm trees, as you can see here. Um, but we also went back in the morning to watch the sunrise. So here's a picture of the sunrise, um, really beautiful. Because of the strong currents in the water, this beach isn't always the best for swimming. This beach is very easy to get to. It's just off of Highway 11 near the 55 mile marker sign. If you like turtles, black sand beaches, low crowds, and are near Volcanoes National Park, this is a great beach option. Next up is Kekaha Kai State Park. This is a beach park that's along the North Kona Coast. Here's Makalavina Beach. This beach is about a one mile hike from the main parking lot area. To get there, you're gonna cross a little bit of a lava field here as you can see. 
um, right around where that lava field starts is a small grove of palm trees, which if you like taking pictures, super beautiful area to take pictures. And here's Mahailua Beach. This might be my top beach of all beaches on the big island of Hawaii. This beach is just a short walk to the parking lot as you can see here. This road that you're looking at is the access road that you will take to get to the Mai Hailua parking area. Um, please note that this is a very rough road. It's full of bumps and deep ruts. It's about a mile and a half long, so you're gonna want to drive slow. The road is about a mile and a half to the end parking lot. But note there are several areas where you can park along the road. So if you decide you don't want to drive any further just because those ruts are getting deeper and bigger, there are a few different parking areas that you can choose from. This beach is Ke Kaha Kai State Beach. It's right next to the parking lot. This beach had coarse sand and it was on a hill so we couldn't really see the beach from where we were sitting. We just had a small snack then decided to get up and walk to the next beach. The water here is beautiful, however there is a lot of lava right on the beach. Because this beach is right next to the airport, you will see a lot of airplanes going over every couple minutes. So if you're flying into the big island in Tacona, you will likely take this same route to see an overview of all of these beautiful beaches. Just a short walk away was the Mahailua Beach, which is where you see here. And actually under this tree is where I showed you before. I'll show it again. Is this tree right here. It's perfect because you're right on the beach. You have that shade. And again, airplanes coming and going the whole time you're there. We aren't super great at relaxing, but we do enjoy having a little bit of fun. Here we are, making memories in the sand, taking pictures, and just enjoying the sunshine. We love this beach for its location, sand, turquoise water, and it's just a smaller beach with few people. Plus it had great shade trees right on the beach. We love this beach so much, we visited twice during our stay. If you're ready for the next beach, just head north on the trail and after about 15 minutes, you will reach Makalavena Beach. This beach is similar to the last one in that it has great water, great sand, great views. This beach is super nice in that it's a nice long sandy beach. Uh, one of the main differences though is that there are less trees, so it's more sun and less shade. If you're in the mood for more walking, you can head north another mile and a half and you'll come across Koa Bay, which is another beautiful white sand beach. Restrooms are located by the parking lot, which is a one mile walk from this beach. Plan accordingly as there is no fresh water at this beach. If you're looking for the perfect postcard picture beach, love turquoise water and white sand beaches, this is a great beach. Next is Honomolino Beach. We put this beach on our top three list of best beaches on the island. To get to this beach, you'll take Highway 11 to Milili, which is one of the oldest fishing villages in Hawaii. Take Milili Road and follow until you get to Milili Beach Park. This is where the road ends. There's a small parking lot near a fenced sport court. Find the yellow church on the left and follow the trail to the right. One of the reasons that we rated this beach so highly was the hike to get there. We're hikers, so we love hiking. This is just a short hike. It's about a mile and a half round trip. Along the trail, you'll walk through beautiful rainforest filled with exotic plants, lava flows from Mauna Loa, and these strange snake looking cactus that you can see on the right here going over that tree and also on the left. These were all along the trail, super unique. I haven't seen those anywhere else on the big island. Another reason we really like this area was the vibe and the culture is so much different than any other part of the island. Like you're really, truly hanging out with the locals. The kids are all playing outside, everyone is so friendly. You can tell it's just one of those tight-knit communities. Honomolino Bay has about a half a mile of beach. It's a mix of white and black sand, so a beautiful salt and pepper beach. Palm trees line the background. It's a great place for picnics, watching the blowhole, building a sandcastle, or just relaxing. It's definitely more of a quieter beach, and being on the bay, you get the calmer water as well, so a great swimming beach. Keep in mind, there are no lifeguards or beach facilities. The closest restrooms are near the Yellow Church, located near the parking lot. If you're looking for a secluded beach near a small community village, 
Enjoy clear, calm, turquoise water with very few people. This is a great beach. Next up, Ho'okana Beach. So this beach gets my top boat for the best beach on the island and let me show you why. So we camped here, we woke up early, had breakfast on the beach at the picnic table before everyone else was awake, and then we just snorkeled the rest of the morning. And as for the water, it's beautiful. It's so clear, so calm, just beautiful. Other reasons that we love this beach, great vibes. It had very much a local feel, a fun and lively crowd of people were on the beach. They had great facilities, a great place to camp. They have tent camping, van parking. It's a nice soft sand beach, great for cartwheels, a salt and pepper beach, plenty of shade, picnic tables right on the beach. You can rent kayaks, boogie boards, snorkel gear on the beach, and they usually have a small concession stand for snacks near the beach as well. The snorkeling here is comparable to Two Step and Captain Cook, but easier to get to and a lot less crowded. Be aware there are no lifeguards at this beach and also there's not a lot of parking so just be sure to get there early. Lastly, if you're looking for the perfect beach, here it is, Ho'okana Beach. Next is A Bay and Waikoloa Beach. This area offers many great hotels, restaurants, and shopping in the area. It can certainly get crowded at times. We did see several turtles just a few minutes walk south of these beaches where there was less people. Overall though, these beaches are very beautiful and they're in a very popular area. After some time on the beach, we went to find a nice cool treat over by the King's Shops in Waikoloa Village. There's this place called Original Big Island Shave Ice Company. What you're looking at is the Strawberry Sundae Shaved Ice. It's vanilla ice cream, strawberry sundae syrup, strawberry puree, cream, more whipped cream, and a wafer. There are several other fruit choices. I promise this treat will not disappoint. Next is Hapuna Beach. This beach is ranked as one of the world's best beaches. It has white sand, clear water, and is one of the most famous beaches on the Kohala coast. It is part of the state park, so there is an entrance fee of $5 a person with an additional parking fee of $10 per vehicle. This beach can be very crowded, especially on the weekends. We parked at Hapuna Beach and hiked to Puako Bay, passing several small beaches. Some had people and some were without. I've learned with all of the great coastal hikes here on the big island, it's just a matter of time before you find yourself on another beach. If you're looking for a world-class beach, Hapuna Beach is a great choice. If not, just keep walking. The Kohala Coast is loaded with great beaches. Next is Spencer Beach, located about three miles north of Hapuna Beach. Spencer Beach has a smaller feel and ample shade with so many large native trees right on the white sand beach. Water is calm, making it a family-friendly beach. We parked at this beach and walked along the Ala Kahakai hiking trail to the Mauna Kea Beach. We passed so many great beaches. Most were small, but we had them all to ourselves. This beach that you can see right here in the video, if I remember correctly, was the third beach from Spencer Beach. It might have been about a 30 to 40 minute hike from Spencer Beach. It was a cozy beach that we were able to enjoy all to ourselves. The trail we were on then merges with the golf cart trail at the Mauna Kea Golf Course, which took us to our final stop at the Mauna Kea Beach. Next is Two Step Beach at Hona A Naua Bay. It's known for being one of the best places to snorkel in all of Hawaii. There isn't a sandy beach here, just a lava rock edge for entry. As you can see, I'm standing on the what's known as two-step. There's two steps that go right into the water, which seemed like a pretty safe place to enter. There were a lot of sea urchins, so just be mindful where you put your hands and feet. We stopped here just before sunset, but I've heard mornings are a better time to snorkel. We saw a lot of fish just in the short while we were in the water. Parking can be difficult as there are very few spots, so be sure to get there early. If you're looking for a world-class snorkeling site, be sure to add two step to your bucket list. Next is Pololu Beach, which is about 60 miles or an hour and a half drive from Kona. Parking is at the top of the cliffs, 
Then you follow a trail which is about a quarter mile hike and this goes down into the black sand beach which takes roughly 20 minutes. Be mindful as this hike can be steep and slippery, especially when wet. At times it feels like you are in a scene straight out of Jurassic Park. We did see a handful of surfers here, probably due to the high surf. The water here is more rough and unpredictable with strong currents, so it's not the best swimming beach. But it is great for picnics and enjoying the views. Parking is limited here, and also note there are no amenities at this beach, so plan accordingly. Next is Papakolea, known as Hawaii's one and only green sand beach. I've read this beach is one of four green sand beaches in the world. Papakolea is halfway between Captain Cook and Volcanoes National Park. It's about 50 miles to either of those locations. Once you arrive at the parking lot, there are two ways to get to the beach. You can either hike, as we did, or you can hire a local to drive you there. This is a longer hike, or at least it felt like it, because of the sun, heat, and wind. It's about five and a half miles round trip. At times you're hiking on sand, sometimes lava rock, and other times fields of grass. The views of the ocean are stunning all the way to the end. I was always amazed by the size of the waves that would crash into the shoreline. You will know you've arrived when you see this very old cinder cone and several trucks on top. This beach has become more popular with time. It's very crowded on the weekends and can get crowded during the week, during late morning through the afternoon. It's best to get an early start if you're looking to avoid the warmer temperatures and the crowds of people. It is a little steep and can be slippery with all the sand on the top of the lava, so take your time on the way down. Swimming is possible here, but know the waves and surf can be rough. Also note there are no facilities or shade at this beach. The sand wasn't as green as I had imagined, but when you look close enough, it's green, looking much like pickle relish. Most people that visit don't stay very long. It's just enough to see, maybe get their feet wet or go for a short swim and take a few pictures. Then they're off on their way. This is the famous ladder that you will take to get to the beach and again back to the top. And here's one last look from the top of Papakolea. When going to and from this beach, there was no exact trail. We stayed closer to the edge so we could see the water the whole time and just walked towards the people coming our way. Be careful on your way back as it's easy to miss that right turn that takes you back to the parking lot. Our next stop is a popular one on the south side of the island. It's the southernmost point in the United States. And if you're feeling adventurous, you can take the 40-foot plunge at the cliff dive at the South Point Landing. There is a ladder that will bring you back up, however, it is not secured to anything, just dangling in the air. I did not do this jump. Instead, we went to the southernmost point to see the beach, which is interesting because all the waves are coming from a different angle and they all kind of crash in the same point. From this point, if you were to continue to go south, you would reach Antarctica in about 7,000 miles. Next is Isaac Hale Beach Park, also known as Pohoiki Black Sand Beach. Isaac Hale Beach Park was a popular place to camp. However, it has been closed until further notice due to the 2018 eruption. You can still swim here. There is a new pond where the old boat landing was from the lava flow. You can walk over the lava here to get to Pohoiki Beach. The drive here is beautiful. Be sure to take Highway 130 to 137. Do not use Highway 132. Here you can see the parking lot, pond, and Pohoiki Beach, the newest black sand beach on the island. Our last stop isn't a beach, but I did add it to our list because it's a very cool area. It's at Mackenzie State Recreation Area. This hike takes you along the 2018 Lava Flow Trail. Along this trail were by far the biggest waves we've seen on the island, and watching the waves crash into the lava cliff was such a sight. From here, you can hike all the way to Pohoiki Beach, which is the newest black sand beach on the island. 
So this wraps up our video of many of Hawaii's best beaches. Although we didn't cover them all, there are plenty more beaches out there. We hope you've enjoyed this video and hope it helps give you some suggestions of great beaches to see on your next visit to the Big Island. 